For many years, Robert Fairley considered conventional steam locomotives to be seriously deficient. He believed they wasted weight on unpowered wheels and the wasted energy pulling a tender behind them that only contained fuel and water. He also noted how standard locomotives had a front and a back and weren't meant to be driven in reverse, meaning stations required turntables or away. His answer to this supposed problem was certainly unique to say the least. He designed a double-ended locomotive with every wheel being driven and in 1864 he patented his design. The water was carried in side tanks and the coal in bunkers on top of them. At each end of the locomotive was a swiveling powered bogey, each having four wheels that were powered by two cylinders. There was a smoke box at each end of the engine, both connected to the same boiler. The initial design only had one firebox, but after problems with draft and steaming, the firebox was swapped out for two separate ones, which worked significantly better. Steam was then transferred to the cylinders through a flexible copper pipe, but as this was prone to breaking, it was replaced with a metal ball and socket joint instead. The first engine was called Little Wonder and was tried on the Festinioch Railway in Wales. After its success, Fairley gave the Festinioch the right to use his design without restriction in return for them letting him use the line for publicity. He then went on to sell his design all around the world in the US, Canada, Mexico, Ireland, New Zealand, Russia, India and Burma. The design, however, wasn't by any means means the massive improvement it seemed. The engines had a very small capacity for coal and water, and because of the double-ended design, there was nowhere for a tender to be attached. Some examples were oil-fired instead of coal, which proved to be somewhat more efficient, but not by much. The boiler also ran through the middle of the cab, separating the driver and the fireman, not only making the cab somewhat cramped, but also the controls would be on only one side relative to the driver, making it left-hand drive going one way and right-hand drive going the other. Because the driver was stuck on one side of the cab, it also meant it was harder for them to see signals. The flexible steam pipes were also a problem for a long time as they were prone to leaking. The pipe problem was solved, but decades after the initial problem arose. The bogies themselves were among the biggest of the problems due to the lack of unpowered wheels. The reason locomotives have unpowered wheels at the front is to help guide the engine round curves and stabilize the locomotive. Because Fairley's engines didn't have these, they were prone to riding rough and often to railing. There were also no balance weights at the other end of the bogies to balance out the weight of the cylinders, which also contributed to derailment. An altered version of the design came from Ireland, being called a single fairly. It only used one articulated bogey instead of two and looked more like a conventional locomotive, meaning it had much more room for bigger water tanks and a coal bunker. The swiveling axle also meant the engines could negotiate tighter curves than most. The design was used throughout the UK as well, with one being built on the Festiniog Railway. Today, most diesel locomotives use a similar layout, with two swiveling bogies and all wheels being powered. As for steam locomotives, the design didn't last too long, with its faults undermining any benefits that would be gained by having all the wheels driven. Some American steam locomotives still incorporated swiveling powered bogies, such as the Big Boy, but for the most part, the standard wheel layout worked much better. The Festiniog Railway continues to use Fairleys, with three currently in service, one at the National Railway Museum and another under construction. Though they aren't as perfect as Fairley wanted them to be, they're still an intriguing footnote and an interesting experiment that has endured through the history books. Subscribe for more.